What's up out there YouTube? Double D here with Turnage Dubois. Welcome back. Once again, we're going to continue with the how-to series, uh, intro to wood turning. Last week, we showed you how to make a tenon. This week, I'm going to use the same piece, flipped around in the chuck jaw, of course, and we're going to show how to make a mortise. So a tenon like this sticks out and the chuck jaws grab around that to turn it. A mortise, on the other hand, is inverse. So instead of sticking out from the wood, it goes into the base of the wood and you would be able to put the chuck jaws inside that and expand it out to grab a hold of that. Now, once again, the chuck jaws are dovetailed. So they're wider at the top than they're at the bottom. The mortise will be on the outside edge of this. So we wanna get as much of that angle as we can, but dovetail it as well so that it fits in. And once again, we wanna get that base of it just as flat as we possibly can so that when we get that pressure against it, then that's what will turn the piece as we cut it. So let's get going. So once again, because this is gonna be pretty quick and what, this is the exact same piece we used last week. So we're just gonna put a mortise here in the top because eventually this is gonna become a bowl. So um, we're going to take our tool. The first thing we do is when we tighten everything down, we always wanna spin our piece to make sure it's not gonna hit that tool rest. Then we're gonna start, start flattening off this surface and then we're gonna start with our mortise in the middle portion. So let's get rolling. Just like in the last video, I'm just a little over 700 RPM right now. Now that ticking you hear as it turns is because it's not leveled off. As you can see, there's low spots and there's spots that I have cut. So that's what it's doing is that it's the sound of the tool not hitting the wood continuously. So we just wanna keep going until we get that smoothed out and then we will start getting our mortise area done. Now that's not perfect, but that's good enough for what we want to do today. So we have our center ring. So we know that that is where our face plate was mounted. So once again, we will take our template, this being for a tenon, this being for a recess. So as you can see, the inside of the, of the recess, which is the outside of this part and this part, is smaller than, these, than the holes where we have where the face plate was mounted. So we just, one, there's a couple of things we can do. Number one, we can eyeball it, but we can also use a pencil and, or a pen, mark or whatever, and get that marked to where we have an idea as to where it needs to be. That'll just save us a little bit of headache if we do that. So I can see it's approximately, it's gonna be about right here. So let's take that, measure it up to our spigot. Nope, it's a little bit narrow. So we're just gonna come out to this line. Let's check that one. 
and that is pretty spot on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here in the middle and I'm going to work my way out to get that section down lower and then I'll show you how we flatten it off. Now it doesn't have to be super deep. All right, so we have our basic size there. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to, I'm gonna use my carbide cutter and smooth that off and get a nice perpendicular edge here. All right, so I have my square carbide in hand. Just gonna set it here and go straight in and then work it across. That way I'll get that nice and flat. So once we have that cut, we have two options. Number one, we can use our diamond point carbide to go in and do a little bit of a dovetail, just come in here at an angle, or we can use our skew like we did for the, more, for the tenon and do the same thing. Just come in at a slight angle and get a nice dovetail on that. Now the reason I like to use the skew is because that also helps keep that flat. So well, once again, we use our template and it fits in. That's a really, really good fit. So let's get the tent, let's get the chuck head attached. All right, so we want to make sure that we tighten our chuck jaws all the way in. So we're just gonna get those to where they collapse on each other and make that nice circle. Then we're just gonna set it right down inside that hole that we just made for the mortise and we're just going to expand those chuck jaws all the way out. So I want I keep nice firm pressure from the top just so that it sits down really well. And we're just going to open those up as much as we can to keep those tight. So as you can see, I have about a nickel's width in there, which is about what we really want for mortises and tenons because it's going to keep that same tightness as you saw in the previous video. Um, you, it'll use the most of that the edge of the chuck jaws uh, against the piece. So that's in there really good. It holds the piece up as you can see. It's going to get good pressure and give us a good spot to be turning that piece. All right, hope you enjoyed that real quick project of showing how to make a mortise or how I make a mortise and how I use that uh, in different pieces. So a lot of times I might use a mortise to get a good grip on a, on a rough piece so I can get a really good tenon on the other end and not have to turn between centers. Um, sometimes I'll flip it around. Once in a while I will use a mortise on the bottom of a piece. I don't use a lot of mortises anymore because I like that smooth finished look as opposed to having that mortise in the base of that bowl forever. I will say when you put a mortise on a piece as opposed to a tenon you can finish off the whole piece, sand it, and do a complete finish, flip it around, and you're done with the outside. You don't have to redo anything. You don't have to take anything off or anything like that. So it does save a little bit of time, but once again, like I said, it does leave that on there showing how it was connected to the lathe. And once again, keep in mind, these are techniques that work for me. Might not work well for you, but at least it gives you an idea on how you can approach the same type of item. If this is your first time here, please do consider subscribing. If you like that video, mash that thumbs up. If not, Mash the thumbs down, leave a comment, feedback down below. Hopefully I can help teach you 
and help you on your journey as you begin wood turning or are just starting out. And it's always good to have a refresher as we go and go back to the basics. At any rate, we'll catch you next time.